Hello and welcome to Bay College Video Lectures, Math 085. This is section 1.14. It is the last section of chapter 1. And we're going to talk about solving equations with integers. Now, we've dealt with working with equations in whole numbers in a previous section. But now, we're going to work with integers. What does it mean to work with integers? That means that maybe our answers might be negative. But that's OK. We've learned how to deal with integers. So we're going to review some of the properties that we use to solve equations. Here we have a first degree equation because the power of the variable is 1. And b and c are just some integers. How would I solve x? My goal, my objective to solve an equation is to get the variable all by itself. Whether it's on the left side of the equation or the right side of the equation really doesn't matter as long as it's by itself. So if I'm going to solve this, I can use subtraction, undo this addition subtract by b. But if we recall, one of the properties of equality is what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And even though these are not actual numbers to work with, b minus b, well, any number minus itself is 0. I can essentially think of it as going away. So it just leaves me with x on this side. On this side, I have c minus b. Whatever x is, it's going to be c minus b. So I've solved this for x. Now, if these were integers, I could do this subtraction or find their difference and know what x is. Well, here I have subtraction. It's the same type of equation, but a different operation. So instead of subtraction, I can add b. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I can think of that as going away. x equals c plus b. Again, I've solved for x. Whatever c and b are, if I add them together, I will know what x is. And lastly, I see the operation. I assess the operation. It's not addition. It's not subtraction. It is multiplication. I can undo multiplication with division. And we know any number divided by itself is 1. So that's going to reduce to 1. But what I do to one side, I have to remember to do to the other. So a divided by a is 1. 1x one is just an x. And c divided by a is what it is. If I knew what c and a were, I could divide them. And then I'd have the value for x. And these could be integers, positive or negative, which means x could be positive or negative. So let's look at an example of the solution being either positive or negative. So we have negative 84 equals 12y. We're asked, is 7 a solution or is negative 7 a solution? Well, if I plug this in, 7 times 12, I could find, well, that is 84 if I multiply it out. But positive 7 times a positive 12 would be a positive 84. This is negative 84. So I know that this is not a solution. But 7 times 12 did give me 84. Is negative 7 a solution? Well, negative 7 times a positive 12, a negative times a positive is negative would give me negative 84. Negative 84 is negative 84. Is this a solution? Yes, it is. So we can see how the solutions may end up being an integer that's negative, right? Let's look at some examples over here. Again, I just want to uh, stress to solve an equation, our goal, our objective is to isolate the variable. And we do that by doing the opposite operations in which we see. If I have x plus 11 equals 5, well, I want to get x by itself. That's my number one objective. And I'm going to do it by undoing the math. I have x plus 11, so I can subtract 11. What I do to one side of an equation, I have to do to the other. So 11 minus 11, well, that's 0. 0 plus x is just x. Now we have to deal with these integers. I have 5 minus 11. Well. <coughs> They have different signs. I find their difference. The difference of 5 and 11 is 6. Which is the biggest value? The 11. That determines the sign. x is negative 6. One thing I should always do when working with equations is check my work. Take that value and plug it back in. Negative 6 plus 11. Well, different signs find their difference. Their difference would be 5. This is equal to 5. That's a true statement. I know that's the answer. I can't be wrong. Let's look at this here. Here's my y. Even though here it was on the right side of the equation, here it's on the left side of the equation, that's OK. Or vice versa. Here it's on the left, and here it's on the right. My goal is to just get it by itself. So <clears throat> to undo this math to the y, well, I'm going to 
add 12. So what I do to one side, I do to the other. And now I say, OK, they have different signs. We're going to find their difference. Their difference is 4, but it's negative because the larger value is negative. And this is 0. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0, which just leaves me with the y. y is negative 4. That's the same thing as saying y is negative 4 is the same as negative 4 equals y. It doesn't matter which order it's in. This is OK. If you feel comfortable, you can rewrite it as that. They mean the exact same thing. y equals negative 4 is the same as negative 4 equals y. Let's check our work. If I put negative 4 into here, and let me just rewrite it right here. Negative 4 and negative 12, they have the same sign, so I'm going to combine them. So 12 and 4 is 16. They're negative. Negative 16 is negative 16. It doesn't get any true, more true than that. I almost said truer, but that would be improper English, right? Good thing it's math. All right, <clears throat> if we look at this example, we identify this and say, OK, here's my x. I've got to get it by itself. What's the operation? Well, this would be the integer of negative 5. We have to realize that that's the coefficient of this term. It's a negative 5, and it's being multiplied by x. Well, how do I undo multiplication? I do division. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Well, what's negative 5 divided by negative 5? Well, if we assess the sign, a negative divided by a negative, two negatives is a positive in multiplication or division. So this reduces to a positive 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1, which is just leaves me 1x. <clears throat> On this side, negative 5 divided by negative 5 is a positive 1. x equals 1. Now, let's check that. Is negative 5 times 1 equal to negative 5? Well, yeah, anything times 1 is itself. 1 times this value is negative 5. That's a true statement. So I checked my work. I know it's right. Here, we see we have 5x equals negative 25. It's similar to the last one, but a little different. If uh, we look at this and say, OK, my coefficient is a positive 5, I can undo that coefficient using division, because this says 5 times x. Let's divide. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Here I get 5 over 5, which just leaves me as 1x or just an x. Here I have a negative divided by a positive. Only one negative, that's going to be a negative value. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Let's check our work. Is 5 times a negative 5 equal to negative 25? It sure is, so I know it's right. So why don't you go ahead and try this one on your own, pause the video, work it out, and hopefully you feel confident with it. All right, we're going to move on over to here. All right, so let's look at this example here. We're going to undo this multiplication by this integer coefficient of negative 29. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So negative over a negative is positive. Two negatives, right? And 29 divided by 29 is 1. So this is s, so s on the right side. What about 87 divided by negative 21? If we assess the sign first, well, there's only one negative in this division. So my answer will be negative. And 87 divided by 29 is 3. If you can't see that, maybe you want to do long division in the margins, feel free to do so. But we get negative 3. And again, it doesn't matter what side of the equation your variable is on, as long as you've isolated that variable. s equals negative 3. Negative 3 equals s. It doesn't matter which way you read it. That is the solution. We can plug it back in and check it. If I put in negative 3 here, a negative times a negative is a positive. That's a good sign. And 3 times 29 is 87. So that will make that a true statement. Well, let's look at this one. Sometimes we have to first combine some like terms before we can start isolating that variable. So if I look at this, we have some integers. It's just addition or subtraction. So I'm going to work left to right to simplify it. 13 minus 67 is a negative 54. And I'm going to write down each step on this side. And over here, I have w, which is my variable, minus 13 plus 8. These are like terms I can combine those. The difference, because they have different signs, the difference of 13 and 8 is 5. The larger number is negative, so it's a negative 5. Now I can continue, and I can say, well, negative 54 and 24 is going to be negative 
30. Different signs, I find their difference. They differ by 30. The larger number is negative. And now I can get w by itself. I've combined all my terms. Now I can undo the math. Negative 5, I want to add 5 to both sides. So I get negative 25 when I do this. Different signs, I find their difference. The larger number is negative. And here, negative 5 and 5 is 0. w and 0 is just w. I have found the value. And now I can plug it in and check it. <clears throat> when we simplified this side, we got negative 30. No sense in doing that again. But if I plug negative 25 into this side, well, negative 25 minus 13. Same sign combined. That's going to give me a negative 38. Negative 38 and positive 8, different signs. I find their difference. I get negative 30. That's a true statement, so I know this works. I'm going to put a little check mark by it, because I check my work. This example here, we have 2z minus z equals 17 minus 12. This is one I want you to try yourself. So you can pause the video and try that yourself. Let's look at this example here. We can see, OK, we got lots of z's, lots of combining to do. And over here, we have many integers. So that's essentially our goal. Let's get our variable together. Let's combine any like terms we can, and then attempt to isolate that variable. So I'm just going to work left to right. 4z and 14z would be 18z. And maybe I do the same thing over here. 93 minus 50 would be 43. And now I can combine a little further. If I work left to right on this side of the equation, 18z's minus 21z's, they're like terms. 18 minus 21, different signs find their difference. Their difference is 3. The larger number is negative. 43 and 20 is 63. Now I see I have multiplication. So I can undo that multiplication with division. What I do to one side, I do to the other. A negative over a negative is positive. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1z one will equal 63 divided by negative 3. We do a sign assessment, a positive over a negative. There's only one negative. That's an odd number, so it's negative. 3 goes into 63 21 times. How do I know that? Well, I might do it a little differently. I say 3 goes into 6 twice, 3 goes into 3 once, because both digits are evenly divisible by 3. Or we can use divisibility rules, something we'll talk about more in depthly. So z equals negative 21. Here's where you can take the opportunity to practice your skills, go back to the original problem, and plug it in. Make sure that this side equals that side. Make sure that I got the right answer here. So <clears throat> with enough practice, you'll be where you need to be. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you.